Well, welcome back to the Creek Chronicles. It's absolutely beautiful out here. 18 degrees, the sun is shining, very few clouds in the sky, and better yet, my baiting efforts have paid off, and there are a couple of carp swimming about. Um, I didn't bait up yesterday, but I baited up the day before, and a significant amount anyway. I think they've probably only just cleaned it up, maybe as of last night, and there seems to be a couple of good sized fish in here. So we're gonna get the rig sorted. Um, I'll show you kind of what we're running today and explain some of the tactic, maybe a little bit about uh, why I've chosen this particular spot. So let's get in and uh, hopefully we can get into one or two. Last time I was here, last week, the pop-up rigs were really working well for me. As we have come to learn at this location, there's a lot of debris on the bottom from the trees that surround us here and all that matter is sort of finding its way down to the bottom. It's creating a nice blanket, which is good because it actually allows for, you know, grubs and such to find cover. And then as they hatch, of course, they begin to come up through those weeds. They create those little oxygen bubbles and the carp are drawn in by that. So it would be foolish not to work those mats, work the little gravel bars um, that these mats are, are um, on top of and try to draw those fish to natural feeding locations. Obviously with my pre-baiting, I can actually see that some of those places that at one time had a nice little blanket of weed on them have now been completely cleared. And you can actually see clear gravel. So still running with a standard popped up rig. We have just a small stripped back piece of braid here to a size six wide gape. And on the end of that, I've put a West Country Baits uh, cream pop up in the washed out pink. Down to a droplet system, we do have some weeds out there, a big mat just sort of uh, out on the end of the mouth here. The fish do get in there and I mean, they can get stuck, right? That lead gets in there, it gets stuck, it can pop out and the fish will move up back in the water column, potentially helping me land that fish, but without a doubt in the event that I get a break off, that fish will be able to eject that rig and the lead without much concern. So I think we're just going to top up a little bit of goo on top of this pop-up and uh, yeah, we'll get it out there, see what happens. This time of year it is incredibly important to be close to your rod looking for all signs of indication last weekend when i was here and i was here with Taya, we went over talking about how slow the takes are how sort of you know finicky they seem and the fish are still quite sluggish the water is still quite cold we're still only in the 40 maybe low 40 fahrenheit so they're just waking up and of course that means they're not really putting out too much energy, even on the big runs, right? So the secret is staying close and looking for all means of indication. That line tightening up, that bobbin coming up, dropping back. There's only one reason a lead drops back, right? Um, but staying close to your rods. So I'm literally parked not even a foot away from the butt end of my rod, where my knees are going to be placed in this seat in just a few moments time. Looks good out there and I can see quite a few big fish swimming around. So fingers crossed, we'll have one real soon. Another tip, at this time of the year, as I said before, they're only just waking up. If you show up and you start spawning away and you start catapulting away, scooping away and putting in a ton of bait, you're more than likely going to shut your swim off entirely. It's not to say they're not eating, they are. They are most certainly eating. And what I found is, is that putting in a little bit of bait and fishing per fish is a lot more effective than trying to draw in 
large pods of fish all at once. We're talking two, three scoops in a swim every hour. Just enough that it is very well presented around your rig. It's right there. You're not trying to spread it out. You're just trying to keep it nice and localized and trying to keep the fish honing in on your area. It just increases that chance of an encounter without providing too many feeding opportunities, right? If you can create a bit of competition right there, rest be assured you're going to get a bite. There's been a few knockings here on the bobbin. Thought I'd throw the camera on just in case. Very, very light. And uh, those are indicating to me that there's fish feeding on top of the baited area and at my rig, which is, you know, strategically placed amongst that bait. It's not necessarily found yet, but they're hitting the tail on the line. It could turn into something soon, though. Well, it's coming to my attention that the camera wasn't running for that fight, but the proof is in the pudding. A lovely way to start off this second installment of the Creek Chronicles. A beautiful common carp here. We'll get this one back and hope that another one graces us very shortly. Well, what more can be said? Beautiful, beautiful carp here. Off like a shot. vicious take than I was anticipating. That first fish I had it was very, very lethargic. It was a very slow throbbing pulse on the uh, bob and this, this fish ripped off. And it looks to be another good sign. Big run, I think that's all she had in her, to be fair. Putting up more of a fight on the mat at the moment, but another lovely common here. Beautiful fish. You can see the sunken eye. Don't know if you can see that, but very interesting little trait. Seen a couple of fish with that, and I haven't quite sorted out what the meaning of all that is. But either way, lovely just to be out here on such a beautiful day, enjoying some very, very good company. Let's get this one back. Makes it all worth it. Nice warm day when you're starting to wake up. Ah, I love this sport. I don't know if I can say much right now. I just got a glimpse of this fish. 
and this one I think it is. This is about to be an, an incredible second installment to the Creek Chronicles. It's very special. It is a very special fish. I think I'm gonna need a minute. This is a fish of a lifetime. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, wait till you see this. Wait until you see this. Um, I might start crying. <laughs> this is truly a fish of a lifetime. A bucket list fish for me. <sighs> oh, give me a second. <laughs> oh man, the emotions are so raw right now. <sighs> this is easily a 20 pound. <laughs> Wild coin. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful fish. Shh, 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 darling. Shh. Oh, my God. 
What an absolutely beautiful specimen. Oh my God. Oh, let's have a look at the other side here too. Just a truly remarkable fish. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Oh, I don't know if we can top a Creek Chronicles after this. Let's get some photos. Let's get some photos. Oh, thank you, fish. Thank you, fish. <laughs> I'm still raw. I'm, I'm going home now because, uh, I, I can't fish anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling really um, overwhelmed. I am full of emotion right now. It seems so silly, of course, to be like this over a fish, but official weight of 24 pounds, two ounces. My first koi and the most beautiful fish I have ever landed in my entire life. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed the second installment of Creek Chronicles. <sighs> Tight lines, tight lines. Oh. <laughs> yes!